Today, I'm going to take part in the biggest Pokemon TCG tournament ever. How did I do? You'll have to wait to find out. But first, we need to go back 12 years. Like most people my age, when I was a kid, I collected Pokemon cards. But I never grew out of it. <laughs> These will be the cards that you will recognize. Everyone loved them, but... No one really went that step further and actually learned how to play the game. I don't know why I originally wanted to play the game, but when I learned back in 2010, I was hooked. And not only was there a game, but there were tournaments, prizes, and world championships to see who was truly the best in the world at Pokemon cards. To cut a long story short, I spent the next few years of my life playing Pokemon cards in tournaments all across the UK and Europe. And eventually made a YouTube channel documenting the whole thing. Little did I know that Pokemon Dan level 45 would evolve into Dan TDM, to which I owe my life and career to. Without the Pokemon TCG, Dan TDM may have never existed. As I grew more busy being Dan TDM, playing Pokemon had to stop, and I never really had the chance to pick it back up. Until now. Right now, I am three weeks to the day away from playing in the biggest Pokemon TCG tournament ever. So I better get started preparing and practicing. But before I start, let me just give you a quick rundown of how a game of Pokemon cards actually works so that the rest of the video makes more sense. Both players have an exactly 60 card deck and play six of those cards face down as prize cards. You win the game by either taking all six of your prize cards by knocking out your opponent's Pokemon, knocking out your opponent's last Pokemon in play, or if your opponent cannot draw a card at the beginning of their turn. In your deck, you have Pokemon that attack for you, energy cards to power up those attacks, and item and supporter cards that help you and your Pokemon to victory. Now that was super basic, there's a lot more to it, but that's the general idea. Now I already had a good grasp of the rules from when I played before, so I had a good head start going into this tournament prep, but there was one big problem. Which deck was I going to play? Since I only have three weeks to prepare for this tournament, I thought it would be best to pick a deck and stick with it to get as much practice time in as possible and this is what i've chosen lost zone giratina the way this deck works is comfy is the main engine where you can use its ability to look at the top two cards of your deck choose one and put the other in the lost zone there's also chorus's experiment which is a supporter card that allows you to look at the top five cards of the deck choose three and lost zone the other two now the lost zone is where cards can go and never be recovered this sounds bad but with other cards in the deck such as cramorant which can attack for free if there are four or more cards in the lost zone mirage gate which can attach energy from your deck to your pokemon if there's seven or more in the lost zone and finally giratina v star which can automatically knock out any active pokemon if there are 10 or more in the lost zone hopefully you can see where the synergy of all these cards works out there's also other cards such as Snorlax, Horlucha, and Radiant Greninja to help you attack and draw more cards, but I'm trying to keep this overview as simple as possible. But now that we've chosen a deck, it's time to play. Thanks to a tweet and the kindness of the community, I have managed to assemble the Avengers of the Pokemon TCG to help to coach me into becoming the best Pokemon player that I can be in such a short time. First, we have Tord Reklev, the only person to win all four international championships and also sits as the current ranked number one in the world. Next is James Cox, who finished fourth at the most recent world championships. We also have Pablo Meza, who has been playing for over a decade, has won countless tournaments and consistently qualifies for worlds. Next up is Isaiah Brown. Radner, who consistently finishes in the top 21 places in whichever tournament he plays and three second place finishes at the biggest tournaments this season. And finally, Ian Robb, who has just won a huge regional to make his fifth regional win ever. Over the next seven days, I spent a couple of hours a night playing and discussing Pokemon cards with this stacked group. In session one with Pablo, I learned about how my deck functioned against Lugia V-Star, another one of the really popular decks. The matchup was tricky, but definitely winnable. The next night, me and Tord talked for about two hours about how my Giratina V-Star deck can approach the other decks that I'll probably play against. He did like my deck choice too. I hung out with James the night after and we played two hours of the mirror match, which means the same decks playing against each other. I've done three sessions now, um, playing, testing, and talking with some of the best players in the world. And I'm actually feeling pretty confident. <laughs> Maybe I could do this. The next session I had was with Isaiah, and we tested my deck against Mew, another really popular deck. These matches turned out to be harder than I thought, but they still went well. However... I've just finished another session, and not gonna lie, the nature of this deck is starting to take its toll on me. 
<laughs> Pokemon has a lot of decisions involved in the game overall. But this deck just multiplies that by 10. I think it's because tonight I feel like I got most of the decisions wrong. I'm starting to have doubts about my deck choice. Because of this, the next day I played against Ian with what would have been my second deck choice. It still had Giratina, but I paired it with Arceus V-Star instead. This super powerful card has an attack that hits for 200 damage and powers up your Giratina and also has a V-Star power that lets you pick any two cards from your deck and place them into your hand. As powerful as this was, I lost every testing game we played, <laughs> so I quickly abandoned the idea. Keep this deck in mind though, it will definitely be important later on. My penultimate session of coaching was with Tord, where this time we played a lot of games, meticulously going through every decision, and even though I didn't win every game, I felt like I was doing all right. You can definitely learn a lot from a loss. I ended my seven days straight of coaching with who I started with. Pablo. And we went through the Lugia matchup again as it was going to be important to get that one right. Overall, I learned a lot in the short time I got to spend with the coaches. Not only did I get to test against the popular decks, but I also got the opportunity to learn the deeper strategy of the game, such as the correct order to play your cards in, and how to play out your turns optimally to be able to have the best chance to win. Things that would take a long time to develop just by learning yourself. It's the night before the tournament and I'm feeling pretty good to be honest. I just hope that I can remember everything that i've learned because it's been a pretty intense week or so <laughs> i am confident in my deck choice i think i just about know how it works all that's left to do is my best now <laughs> oh, i'm nervous time to get some sleep the big day was here and i hadn't been to a tournament in a long time i was absolutely blown away by how many people were there the lines were huge, the stage was epic, and there were so many tables set out ready for people to play the TCG, the video game, and Pokemon Go too. And with the tables ready, it was time to play. Now, let me just quickly explain how a tournament of Pokemon cards works, and then we'll get into my games. Rounds of the Pokemon TCG are played in a best of three format. Each round, you play until one person has won two out of three games. If you win just one game of the three and can't finish any more in the 50 minute time limit, you still win the round. However, if each player wins one game and you can't complete a third, that results in a tie. As you progress through the tournament, you play against people with the same record as you. So if you have won five games and lost one, you will then play your next round against someone who has also won five and lost one. This means the better you do, the better the opponents you'll play against. With that explained, it's time to reveal my results. How did I do? Did I win more than I lost? Did I remember all the information that I taught? Did I lose every round? Well, let's just say that I have a lot more learning to do. <laughs> My record for EUIC, the largest Pokemon TCG tournament of all time, was zero wins, four losses, and two ties. But don't go away thinking that I'm a failure just yet. For players who didn't make day two of the main tournament, there was one the next day called the London Cup, which I decided to play in too. But first... What went wrong? Basically, my thoughts halfway through my coaching sessions turned out to be correct. The deck had really high power and versatility, but it was just too complex for me. I made some silly mistakes that had some massive consequences and cost me games that I definitely could have won. Now, remember when I mentioned to keep that Arceus Giratina deck in mind from earlier? Well, that's why I decided to sleeve up for the London Cup, and that one happened to go a little bit better. The secret source that I was missing when I tested this deck originally with Ian was this guy, Squovit. It allows you to dump your hand to the bottom of the deck and draw one but then you can fill that straight back up with by Barrow's ability that the deck already runs. I played exactly zero games to test with this list, but I still managed to do this. Three wins, three losses, and a tie. I actually managed to start my day with three wins, one loss, and one tie before things started to unravel near the end. And my tie was actually against the current 29th ranked player in the whole of Europe. So I was extremely happy with that. But I wasn't done just yet. I found a local tournament that wasn't too far from me a few weeks later. And if you think about it, I started playing again at the biggest tournament of all time. And this local was going back to basics. This tournament had 14 players total. And I decided to sleeve up Arceus Giratina 
to see if I could show some improvement. And I did. I managed to finish my four rounds that we played with two wins and two ties, zero losses, which meant I ended up placing fourth overall. And if I won my last game, I could have actually won the whole thing. Honestly, local tournaments are where it's at. I started big and worked my way backwards. But if you're looking to get into the Pokemon TCG, just find your local game store and go along. The community is so welcoming and everyone's there for the same reason, for their love of Pokemon and playing the game. Overall, my experience at all three of these tournaments were awesome. I'd like to thank all of the players for helping me out with coaching before the tournament, and I'll leave links to all of their content in the description below if you want to check them out. James also made a more in-depth video about our coaching sessions if you're interested in watching. I genuinely think that Pokemon has one of the best communities out there, and I'm definitely going to carry on playing the TCG and going to tournaments when they come up. Maybe I'll see some of you there.